welcome back to another CanonFastReviews.com. Um, today what we're going to do is replace the filter ring or, um, or the uh, lens hood on a wide angle um, or here like a filter ring on a lens like this. Um, this works for almost every single lens uh, out there. <laughs> Um, there's uh, quite a few variations, of course, but basically this will cover the majority of lenses. So um, if you don't have any of these particular lenses, that's okay because chances are you might still be able to do the repair and do it for a lot cheaper than you expect. So here's kind of the backstory on this. Um, this is my Tokina. 16 to 28 lens and I let my four-year-old son help me do some real estate one day and um, He dropped the lens. I gave it to him for about two seconds and he dropped it and he took a chip out of here and um, I don't really mind and you'll find out why um, Anyways, my inspiration came uh, Well, actually I'll just tell you I, I left this lens. I just glued these pieces back in for like a year and um, I bought the hood um, off, I, bought, I contacted T Tokina directly and I asked them for the hood and it was like something like $17 or $13 or something like that so they're really cheap um, and I've contacted Nikon in the past and got their hoods and Canon and everybody else so the hoods are always well under 20 bucks usually um, for any of the lenses I've ever repaired so Backstory on this. Oh, so I didn't bother repairing mine because I knew eventually I was going to be shuffling this lens out. And then Tamron came out with this beast, um, 16, what is it, a uh, 15 to 30. And I just got this in the mail yesterday. So um, this is replacing the, my Tokina, and I'll do a review on this. These two guys fighting pretty soon here. But, um, um, so I didn't bother repairing my hood just because I'm going to keep on working and I knew I'd eventually sell it so now I'm selling this and so here is the, I'm going to now put this on so it was perfect timing um, because uh, there's a girl, I, this was kind of inspired by a girl was on a Facebook forum with some of the wedding photographers and all that and she was really upset because she bought a brand new Sigma 35mm art lens and uh, uh, and two days after she owned it, she dropped it. I felt so bad. She broke the front on it. Same thing. And um, I felt so bad. But I was like, hey, don't worry. These hoods are cheap if you have the drive to try and do this. So I'll probably share this video with her and maybe this will help her out as well. Hard though, I'm going to show you how easy it is. So the same thing, this is like a Pentax lens. It, it, all you do is remove the front here and this hood will come off. Um, here if you dent your filter ring, if you really care, you can you can either tap it out with a piece of wood or something, but if, you, if it's really mangled, same thing, you can remove the front, take the ring out. You're going to see it's almost, everything is almost identical. So this covers a wide variety of lenses. So let's jump into this thing. So first thing you need is a spanner. Almost every single lens you're going to need a spanner. Um, some of the lenses will have um, like um, a sticky, it, the nameplate will be just a sticker. You can peel it up and right there you have screws exposed. That's even better. But some of these lenses you're going to need a spanner for. And then um, if for your screwdriver you're going to need a JIS, J-I-S, number zero is Japanese International Standard. Uh, it's like a Phillips, um, but it's shaped differently. And then, number, and then number zero Phillips will work, just be very careful. But ideally you want a number zero J-I-S driver. Um, and then here, okay, so then there's a couple, there's, uh, this has got the pointies, and then this has got the square tips. Normally, the square tips do most lenses. This lens, I don't think I'll be able to get in there, so I'm going to have to use the tip, uh, the pointed tip ones. And, um, I'll put in the link in the description for all these. You can get them dirt cheap on eBay, so I'll link it. All right. So we got that ring removed. Here it comes. Whew, that's a deep one. So now we want to take the elements out. We're going to remove these. Again, it looks like the round spanner. So I guess this was the proper type. So we're going with the round spanner. 
Sometimes these have oil. I'm going to assume this has got oil. It will be very stiff. You just take it really slow. Okay. Yeah, this has got oil. So it's very stiff. That's just to help um, the lens not back itself out when you're using it a ton, which is a good thing. But you have to be careful once I remove this element um, that I don't touch any of the oil. Because if you touch the oil, you're going to spread oil everywhere. Okay, now, do not touch these elements, because if you don't touch them, you don't have to clean them. We're just going to set that aside. And this is all oil. You don't want to touch that, because uh, if you touch that, you're going to spread it everywhere. Alright, so we're just going to remove this ring, looks like. We're going to pull that out. You got three screws. One, two, three. Okay, now we're going to remove that ring. Hey, hey, hey. alright. Now we're at this hood, so there's, what, four screws? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's take those out. Remove the hood, and look at that. There it is. Now we're just going to check if there's any labeling or anything that it needs to go a certain way. If Sometimes if you're removing a filter ring and you have a bayonet uh, hood they'll go on, you got to make sure they'll have a white dot, white line, something like that. You want to make sure you put it back identical to how it was because that's how your hood is going to rotate and click on. If you This lens doesn't have it because it's a built-in hood, but some lenses you need that. So we're going to swap this and put this new one on. Put these four screws back in. So I don't tighten them, I just, I'm just i going to put them all in and then I'll tighten them after. Now they don't have to be super tight, you got to remember you're screwing into, you're holding on to plastic, you can crack the plastic if you're not careful. Now we're going to put this ring back on. Again, you want it tight, but not too tight. You don't want to strip the screws or anything. Okay, now, now whether we've taken these screws out, there might be a little bit of plastic residue from the glue, or it's uh, glue residue, but it's like plastic chips in here. So we're just going to tip the lens upside down, just give it a little tiny blowout, and keep going. Okay, now we're going to put the front element back in. What you want to do is hold the element like this, and you're going to turn the lens upside down, and we're going to spin it on top. Because if you try to drop this in, chances are you're going to drop it sideways. It's going to chip the glass. It's going to get oil everywhere. So you want to bring it straight down on top like this. Normally what you want to do is once you set it in like this, then you want to take your spanner and turn it backwards until you feel it go click into the, uh, into the threads. Then screw it in. But it seemed to work without doing that. So now we're just going to take our spanner and tighten everything down. We're win. Okay, so we're at the end here, and you want to be making sure you're pressing down hard before you tighten this, otherwise you'll slip and you'll scratch an element. So make sure you press down hard and just give it a little tighten. You don't need to He-Man it on. It doesn't need to be superman on because it, it's not going to go anywhere. So just a little bit of a tighten, and that's it. Then we're going to take this ring, we're going to set it in, and I'm going to try to... Well, I'll probably have to go backwards, it's a bit annoying, but we'll see. And you gotta bring the focus up. There. Right there. Okay, so it clicked and that's in. Now I can go clockwise. We're gonna make sure the focus is up all the way. And we're just gonna tighten it with the spanner. Again, remember this wasn't super tight when we took it off. You're not gonna destroy it by putting it on too tight again. So just give it a little bit of a tighten. And that's tight enough for me. There you go. There's how you change a filter ring or a lens hood on almost every single lens out there. This one actually had a few more steps just because the um, had that extra ring in there I had to take out. But you can still see how quick and easy it is. So there's the old hood, there's the new hood. And the lens is, it looks brand new again, so it's ready to be sold. So yeah. If you guys like this, you know, like and subscribe. I got lots more, and I will eventually be reviewing these two monkeys together. And, uh, you know, this thing's gonna destroy this thing, and it has image stabilizing, or what do they call it? OS? I guess it's Pentax. I can't remember. <laughs> VC, right? Vibration control. Where this one doesn't. Um, 
but yeah, we'll see how they compare in real practical life. Anyway, you can also check out a bunch of my reviews. You can see this lens shot on canonfastreviews.com. That's Canon with two N, C A N N O N. Yeah, so if you can like and subscribe, that'd be super duper. Yay! Okay, talk to you. Bye.